I do vocal sound effects. Sound like horses galloping. Water gurgling when you pull the cork out of the bottle. Booze. And low flying jet planes. There's an amplifier under the dashboard. There's a microphone mounted over the instrument panel, and there's a bullhorn loudspeaker mounted in front of the radiator behind the grill of this car. You have heard some of the sounds that I do. Can you imagine these sounds coming out of the front end of that car as I'm driving down a big residential section? <laughs> at three in the morning. <laughs> and I'm the type to do it. I'm the reason for birth control. Well, they got to stop it somewhere. <laughs> now, now dig this scene. I'm on an expressway. Everybody's out there tuning their bumpers. There's a traffic jam. They're sitting there waiting on something to happen. It did. I drove up. I get mixed up in that bunch, and I said, well, I may as well entertain them. We're not doing too much out here. So I picked up the microphone and gave them the sound of a horse spraying and galloping out of the front end of the car. And all you could hear for about a mile down that expressway. <laughs> Suppose you were sitting in front of me and heard that, what would you do? <laughs> I get out of the car with the rest of them, look for the horse. <laughs> and they never know who did it. Here's my favorite. I've got a town in Texas haunted. I'd run down to Houston and do a show. When I finish the show, I'd head north. As I cleared the city limits of Houston, I'd enter a little town up there. Any old town, it didn't matter, I'd pick on them. I'd go roaring through this place at three in the morning, pick up the microphone, I gave them a sound they never forgot. This is what they heard in that peaceful, quiet little town. <laughs> then I'd cut it off and roar through. <laughs> You know, I kept that up for six months and I drove those people clear out of their cotton picking skulls. <laughs> they didn't have any tracks in that town. <laughs> this was written up in the newspapers as the phantom train rides again. <laughs> as far as I know, they're still out there digging holes in the ground, cutting the grass, looking for those tracks. <laughs> now here's one. I came back from the Playboy one night, that's the Rabbit Club. And, uh, I come zooming down through this big residential section. There's a big sign out there and it said, live here, you'll love it, $60,000 area. Peaceful and quiet. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that. I said, peaceful and quiet. Well, it was. <laughs> I picked up the microphone and I roared down through that residential section and I gave them a sound that, man, it ruined their reputation in 10 seconds. The sound of cops and robbers, sirens, skidding brakes, gunshots with ricochet and bullets. This is what they heard at three in the morning. You should have seen the lights pop on in those houses. <laughs> Boy, the people come scrambling out of that front door and the dogs right behind them.
And you can't shut him up because it's your neighbor. Now, that's music in that neighbor's ear for that dog to sit there and bark all night long. And if you go over there and hit that dog, he's going to come over there with a shotgun and wrap it around your neck. You know, I've got an answer to this. I put a loud speaker out in the bush. This is true, right in the backyard. Got back in the bed with that microphone. That next door neighbor's dog started. All night long. So I said, this is the night. I'm going to get him. I picked up the microphone and I gave him a sound that made that dog almost jump in the garbage can. <laughs> this is what they heard. <laughs> I think the neighbor fell out of his window. I'm not sure. But you know when I did that, every dog for at least a mile did the same thing. <laughs> had 10,000 neighbors out with a rubber hose beating those dogs. Shut up, you idiot! <laughs> and all I said was... <laughs> I called this my screecher, and it is. One day I eased up to a big intersection that was loaded with victims, or pedestrians. <laughs> there they were going back and forth. Busy, 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 busy. Look good. Out in the middle of the intersection was a cop. He's directing traffic. He's having a ball out there blowing that hustle. Little bit up. I saw him and I said, that looks better. <laughs> then I saw what I was really looking for. There he sat, that stupid nut, that hot rodder with that four-wheel fenderless monster of his gassing up the intersection. <laughs> Sitting there with his black leather jacket on, got two gold bars on his shoulder. He's a lieutenant today. Crosshairs on the hood, he's gonna get the cop and the light turns green. <laughs> he's sitting there showing off his gold teeth, too. Yeah, he likes to show them off. He's got black spots in them, that's buzz. He's got to put the windshield back in the car. <laughs> so there he sat, boy. I saw him and I said, This is my day of glory. I'm gonna get him. I got up to his tailgate, and this actually happened. Picked up that microphone, turned the volume up to ear screeching level, and I gave him a sound and made all four of his tires go flat. <laughs> the sound of an automobile skidding sideways from one intersection to the next. And all you could hear out there for at least a mile. I wasn't even moving. You should have seen what I created out there in that intersection. Boy, that hot guard, he comes sailing out of the car, his hand on the door, he's got his jacket caught. He's swinging back and forth there shouting, who's going to hit it? Nobody move it. Out in the middle of the intersection was a frustrated cop. He didn't know what to stop. He looked like an octopus. <laughs> Stopping birds. Do you remember the people out in that intersection? That was the wettest intersection I've ever seen. I've never seen that much brake fluid in my life. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.